That was a great song, and we could have used that one last week, Heidi, the message that we gave there. Talked about going from crying out to the Lord to actually seeking Him. And what a great song there. You know, the message I want to give today is entitled, God's Wisdom for Transition and Change. And I don't know if any of you have experienced any transition or change in your life lately, but this is a message that I've given, and I've given it now six years in a row. And I give it to myself more often than that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I have to do that from time to time. Give myself a little sermon through the week. And it just so happened last night, Chris and I were walking down Union Road together. And I didn't know it unconsciously. I was kind of talking to myself about a few things. And she kind of looked at me because I was using my hands. And I was doing it internally. And, And what I was doing was giving myself a little sermon. And so when I give this sermon, it's the sixth year in a row that I'm giving it, I'm not so much giving it just to you as I'm giving it to myself, because the pace of change in our life has been pretty rapid now for a while, and maybe you've experienced that. As a matter of fact, those that study change say that change in our world, if you, if you look at the graphs and it's been accelerating over time, and for a while they measured it, you get into the industrial revolution, the technology revolution, and now they literally measure the speed of change in simply one word saying it's constant. Change is now constant in our world. And I would guess some of you feel that just like I do, the constancy of change. And then when other things happen in our life, apart from the speed of change going on in our lives, sometimes we react in different ways. This is the way of a picture how I've felt many times in the last six years. Uh, Dave, could you bring that little picture up there? (laughs) Have any of you felt like that ever recently? I honestly feel like that sometimes in our world. The speed of change, the way change is happening, what's happening with me. And I know some of you have felt like that because I have a picture of another person up here. Similar reaction to change that's happening. Change literally never stops happening in life. It never stops happening. God has wired change into the system of creation. Ecclesiastes 3 says, and this is King Solomon, this wise man, he simply observes, there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. What he's basically saying when he talks about time is God exists outside of time, but he's placed the context of creation in time, and as time unfolds, God, it's linear, it's progressing, it's changing over the course of history. And Solomon said then there's a time to be born, and a time to die. And our time in this world is bookended by those two statements, really, those two realities, birth and then death. And in the middle of that, there's a time, all these things, a time to plan, a time to uproot, a time to keep, a time to throw away, and progressive change happens all through our lives. We can't stop it. We can't stop time, and we can't stop change. And many of the changes that happen are natural changes that God has wired into the flow of Society, civilizations, creation. One of them is stated early on in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And my family just experienced this. Is when God declared the institution of marriage, he said a man will leave his father and mother, there's a change, be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. A new family will start. Transit, many natural changes in the course of life. And I have a picture of my son and his new wife, who happens to be back here today the start of a new family right there, major change in life. What is God's wisdom as we walk through these changes that never quit happening? And this is something that I speak to myself many, many times, these scriptures that I have here today. God's wisdom for transition and change. Number one is this. When we first experienced some changes in life, we're not necessarily always ready for them. I remember my mom talking to me about preparing for college. Tim, we got we to gotta look at where you might go for college. This was when I was in high school. And I said, yeah, yeah, Mom, we'll get to it. And she drug me around to every college in Iowa except one. And when the time came for me to decide, I said, I think I'll go to that one we didn't visit. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking, I was kind of ready to leave home, but I wasn't thinking all that much about college and what I needed to do to be ready for college. And I will never forget standing in that parking lot 
when my parents dropped me off, helped me haul that stuff up to my dorm room. We walked down to the parking lot. I said goodbye to them, and they drove away. And there I stood with that look. What just happened? Have you had that feeling before? I remember the day we found out we were pregnant, my wife Chris and I. I was so excited. I could hardly contain myself. And I had all this zeal and enthusiasm for bringing a new baby into the world. The problem was my zeal lacked any knowledge whatsoever about being a father to a young baby. I was not a babysitter growing up. I took care of little pigs. They're a lot different than little human beings. And my zeal, my enthusiasm was so strong, it just carried me all the way through the nine months, and I had the picture ready in the garage when Chris came home with our new child and everything, and then came the responsibility of taking care of that baby. And let me tell you what, I didn't know a thing about it. I had two younger siblings. I should have gotten some basic training on changing a diaper. I really should have. It took me so long to change that little guy's diaper. He would wet numerous times in between the changes. <laughs> then the idea of his mom leaving home and leaving the child with me alone. It was a miserable first night. He cried the whole night. I couldn't figure out how to get the, the milk that she'd prepared for me heated up to give it to him. I just needed some basic counsel. King Solomon said this about the changes in life. Anticipate them. Know they're coming. Don't deny their reality. Prepare for them as you can. Very simply in Proverbs 22 verse 3 he said, the prudent see what's coming and prepare themselves for it. There are many changes that are coming our way in life that we can predict, we can see. They're the natural unfolding of life in the world. One of the joys of having been around this Western home communities the last five years is all of this insight into how life unfolds as the years go by. Things change every day, every year. And the prudent, Solomon said, they see what's coming and they're preparing for it along the way. They don't have their head in the sand like I did before going off to college. They don't have their head in the sand like I did before bringing a child home. They're looking out ahead and saying, hey, here's what's coming. I know it in my heart. I'm not denying it. I understand it. I accept it. I believe it. Being around the Western home communities has helped me so much with that. I believe God has given me the grace of being here so I could look out ahead and honestly be assessing and facing what's coming. Because the reality is there's a number of things coming for each of us. If you look at Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, he makes a list of a few things that are going to change for all of us. I mean, if, he, if we're around here long enough for these things to change. King Solomon said this, there's at some point, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 3, and it's a description of our body, things that are going to change in our body. And there's sort of imagery and a reference here. He says, at some point, the keepers of the house. So if the body is the house, most, most uh, theologians agree that this is a description of the hands and the arms. The keepers of the house, at some point, they're going to start to tremble and grow a little weaker. It's just going to happen. He also says, the strong men, which probably refers to the legs and the knees and the ankles, those that uphold the house, the strong men at some point, they're going to start to stoop and tremble a little as well. King Solomon continues, those looking through the windows, the eyes. I don't know if you've had this problem. But my eyes, see, you're all fuzzy now. You didn't used to be that way. But when I put these glasses on, see, they're growing dimmer. Anybody have that experience in their life? 
the eyes start to change over time. And then it says the doors of the street will be closed and the sound will grow dimmer. The ears will be affected. Isn't this great what we have to look forward to? <laughs> These kind of changes in life? But then King Solomon pushes it even further. He said the desires at some point won't be stirred as much. The desires in this life will quiet a little bit. And then each person, then each person will go to their eternal home. The Bible gives us insight into many natural changes that will occur between life and death, but it guarantees us about a change that's coming in the end. And one of the things that I really hadn't paid much attention to until coming into the Western home is how much citizens of the United States try to avoid the issue of death. But yet the Bible is constantly trying to prepare us for death. It is appointed unto each person, the writer of Hebrews said, once to die and then to face the judgment. We know what's coming. That transition from this life into the next is coming for each of us. There will be a number of other transitions along the way God will be using to prepare us for. And God said, look up and just admit it. The body's going to... And you know so refreshing around here? So many people are embracing this reality. I talked to them and they got their wills ready. They got their memorial service ready. And they're free they got their heart ready before Jesus, and they're prepared. And it's off their mind. And then they're set free to live. The prudent see what's coming, and they prepare themselves for it, Solomon said. Other wisdom from Solomon is this. Proverbs 3, verse 13, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Proverbs 15, 22, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Scripture says, talk to others who've been through transitions that you're about to enter, that you're going through. I had no idea what my children would do when we were raising them, and they both happened to become athletes. And I watched a lot of different parents deal with their students, their children as athletes. And there's a lot of different possibilities for how you can raise and be involved in athletics as a parent. And I was heavily involved early on. And one day after I was, so in, in a sense, coaching and working a lot with my son, I sat down and I said, Tim, is this the best way to be a father to your son and your daughter in their sporting? And I decided to do a little reading, seek some counsel, seek some guidance. And one of the things I found out that really helped me was young kids and athletes, high school, and then in the NCAA, one of the things they really want from their parents basically two things. One is before they're involved in whatever event they're involved in, express to them, I'm excited to come watch you play. Just say that. I'm excited to come watch you play. And then when they're all done with the event, express to them a couple things you enjoyed about watching them play. And that's about all they want from you. I can tell you this early on, I was doing a whole lot more than that. I needed the counsel of what I heard from them and from others who'd studied this about how to best be a father to my children in their activities. I needed to seek out that wisdom. When my son got recruited, it just so happened to play football for the Hawkeyes, then they do a home visit. The coaches do a home visit. And so Coach Reese Morgan, who was the defensive line coach and coach Kirk Ferentz came to our house for a home visit. And we were excited about this, but I thought this another opportunity to seek some wisdom and counsel. And so as we got into the meal a little bit, I, I turned to coach Ferentz and I said, we've never been parents of a college athlete before. I said, what advice would you have for us? And the advice he gave was so great. I'm so glad I asked the question. He simply said this, he said, as in life, sports have a lot of ups and downs. There's going to be some real down times 
for your son while he's here playing football, and there's going to be some real up times for him. He couldn't have been more right. And he said what he needs from his parents is just a steady, strong encouragement when he's down, affirmation when he's up, knowing that too will pass and this will pass. He just needs steady support from the home front for himself personally and emotionally. When I reflected on that news, do you know what the Bible says about God? It simply says this. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Coach was simply telling me, be a stable support to him in the ups and downs in life. I'm so happy I got that wisdom. Being around here in the Western home, I'm constantly gathering information about how to deal with the transitions that will come later in life. King Solomon says the prudent see what's coming and they prepare for it. They seek out wisdom and knowledge for that and then they realize and acknowledge that most transitions involve some kind of a loss and letting go. There's a time to mourn and a time to weep. Every time God moves us on from one stage of life to the next, we have to let go, don't we? Yesterday I went to... Bernie Huss's memorial. You know, there's a letting go at the end of someone's life. But it happens all through life. When our children were born, they come out of the womb. It's safe. It's warm in the womb. And they're born. And both of them were screaming. They were screaming. Because we were taking away the comfort of their mother's womb and birthing them out into this life. And all of life is a birthing process into the next stage where God moves us on and then he moves us on and then he moves us on. And we have to be willing to let go, to grieve, to mourn, and then look forward. Solomon's wisdom continues. Know they're coming. Don't deny their reality. Anticipate. Prepare for them in this way. Understand the realities of transition and change. And then understand that every transition and change in life offers opportunities for growth and for gain. Even in the middle of the birthing process, God wants us to look forward with hope and anticipation. That's literally how the name of this service came about. It came about from the promise that God is always up to something new. After God birthed the Israelites out of Egypt, he brought them out and they passed through the waters and they were in the desert for some time. And then when they got enough faith, they moved into the promised land and they just kept looking back at all that God had done in the past, all that God had brought them through. And finally, through the prophet Isaiah, God said to them, forget about the former things. Do not dwell on the past, Isaiah 43, 19. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I want new living waters for you at this stage in your journey. So now at this place, you can give praise and honor to me for what I'm doing now. One of the beauties of the Bible, Solomon called young age and old age meaningless. That doesn't mean they're not real and we don't experience it. He was simply saying, in terms of eternity and the values of Scripture, it does not matter your age. The life of Christ is available to the young and to the old. And as we go through the transitions of life, we can grow in it and mature in it and experience more of it. He's always up to something new. And we can look for those opportunities as we move through these transitions and these changes. The great promise of Romans 8 is this. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who've been called according to his purpose. 
For those God foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. All of life is a molding process. And God uses the transitions, the changes, the adjustments to shape and mold us into his glorious image. And what we want to do is stay on the altar before him. Trust him. Believe in his goodness. Because the fact of the matter is, no matter how much there's pain and suffering and hurt in the challenges that we face in this life, God's promises are deeper than all of that. He'll carry us through. All of God's promises to us are yes in Christ. So through him, the amen is spoken to us by the glory of God. The speed of change in the world is constant. It's constant. That creates sometimes a stress in us. One of the things that I feel like the Lord has been settling in on my heart is this, Tim, you don't have to keep up. You don't have to keep up. What is all is happening in the world, some of it's from him, Some of it isn't. If you read about Joseph, he was thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, falsely accused and put in prison, all the while the world was going on without him. And yet he was right where God wanted him to be. And God can take our life and fixate it just as he wants at any moment and any time. A few years back, I found this book, Never Mind the Joneses. Never Mind the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses is a trivial pursuit. God has a purpose for you and for me. A perfect will and a perfect plan. We've got to trust him through this. Seek his face. And he'll unfold it in the right time, in the right way. And carry us all the way to the end. Paul, after he'd been through so much pain and so much hurt and so much hardship, he said, and this is the last verse that I have there, Dave. He said he'd become convinced that nothing could separate us from the love of Christ. Hardship, challenge, life, death. Unseen, seen things. Nothing can separate you and I from the love of Christ given to us by God. Do you know him? God has given a simple formula for us in life. And no matter what has happened and what changes we've been through, it's very simple. Jesus was asked, what's the most significant thing you can do? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That is a fulfilling, meaningful, and purposeful life in a world that's filled with so much activity. It's great to be a part of a community that's growing in this. Thanks for your efforts and your prayers in this. Thanks for all the encouragement. Let's give a time of prayer to the Lord, shall we? Father, we thank you that you know all things and you see all things. We thank you that you care deeply about the transitions and changes in life that we're going through. Many of us are feeling those changes right now. We're feeling the loss. We're feeling a little bit the shock of what's coming. We need your help in preparation. Others of us, Lord, we're in the middle of it and we need wisdom and guidance and ask that you'd help us reach out for that. Then others of us, Lord, we just need renewed in our faith to 
have that confidence in you and what you've told us in your word and your promises. That nothing can separate us from your love. Thank you, Father, for your spirit which guides us into these truths. Thank you for your word which gives us a, a light, a pathway on which to walk and a firm foundation on which to stand. Thank you in the middle of all the chatter in the world that your voice is still there reaching out to us, trying to communicate with us in our hearts, in our spirits about your goodness, your greatness, your kindness. Help us have ears to hear, Lord, through each stage of our journeys. Thank you for your great love for us and your kindness to us. We praise you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Dave, can we back up to that last slide? I think uh, it's good just to maybe a few more moments. Never forget that the promises of God are deeper than the challenge or pain of any transition. Uh, just a reminder that uh, in Jesus... Uh, we have an anchor and a solid rock, and the anchor holds, and the rock is unmovable. And even though we might be in shifting sands or in uh, crazy currents in the river, um, I just pray that there would be those of us that would experience that firsthand and invite others who are in the midst of a rudderless, an anchorless, a change that is full of shifting sand, uh, to invite them into a tasting and seeing that the Lord indeed is good. So uh, there is a solid rock, friends. There's a solid rock, and his name is Jesus. So let's end our worship by celebrating the fact that we have this as truth in our lives. Sing. My hope is built on nothing less Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. good to know the anchor for our souls firm and secure and our hope be built on him it's just a privilege to get together and encourage each other in that if you don't know him as the anchor for your soul as Enrique so we would love to introduce you to him talk to you about him and feel free to come and talk to any one of us as we go today let's remember the Lord goes before us to lead us and guide us he's given us his word as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path he goes behind us to uphold us through the challenge of any trial transition or change that we'll go through in life preparing us for that day when that glorious transition comes from this life into the next. And his spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that exists within believers that know him, will raise us into the glorious gift of his eternity. Far beyond what we comprehend or imagine at this time. And Bernie is there now, and I'm so happy oh, yeah. for Bernie there. If you knew Bernie now, with her healed body and health back in that way, praise God. For the hope of heaven. And he wants to walk with you by his spirit inside your spirit as your friend. And we hope 
You know him as your friend today. Thanks for coming today, everybody. Let's stand together and sing our closing doxology. Thank you for coming, everyone. Have a great rest of your Sunday.